This is Swim Success with Music. Hey, what's going on, people? This is Swim. This is Success with Music. And this is Walt. I am your music coach. You're still in contract house seller. You're when it's all over. Yeah, I feel better. Inspections, appraisals, man. Anyhow, enough of that. Let's dive in. Yo, what's going on, everybody? Again, this is Swim Success with Music. This is a podcast for musicians, music students, singers, songwriters, beat makers. We're about that music life. Hey, I appreciate you tuning in as usual. And um, I really do want to say thank you to everyone who tunes in from around the world. Please keep listening to the show and make sure you share the show, especially for those of you who have music friends, band members, that type of thing. Maybe you teach music, music students, share the podcast. And we can keep the love going. All right. And uh, let me start the show off with a special announcement. I mentioned in previous episodes that we will be featuring uh, guests on the show here. And we're going to be doing that in the next, uh, I would say, couple of weeks or so. Here's the deal. Here's the reason why I'm saying this to you. Our guests that will be coming up in a couple of weeks, and I'll give you some more information later. They are specialists in touring They're specialists in doing shows, management, negotiation with venues, making money with live performances. The point is, I want you to send in your questions before the show drops so that I can get these guys your questions. And that way you can get answers to questions that you have about the things I just mentioned. So again, make sure you get your questions in right now. We will ask the questions. But you got to get them in. Send the questions to this email address, ask at successwithmusic.com. Again, that's ask at successwithmusic.com. One more time, we will be having guests on. These guests, by the way, they are actually recognized in the music industry by the big dogs. They've written multiple books on this stuff. They've been interviewed all over. Get your questions in. You can literally get in insider information about touring, about doing live shows, making money, management questions for your band, the whole nine yards. Get your questions in right now and they will be featured on an upcoming show. Ask at successwithmusic.com is the email address. Send those questions in. Let's get to some of the things that we typically start with here for our show. Today, we're going to get into songwriting. And we actually did an episode on this a while back, but this is going to be another installment on songwriting. So we're going to get to that here in just a second. And actually, in uh, in honor of us going into this topic today, I want to start the show off with some songwriting trivia for you. And after we do that, we'll jump into our main topic for today. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into some uh, song writer trivia. All right, you think you're ready for it? Let's see. All right, this first one here is about Miley Cyrus. So do you remember her hit uh, Party in the USA? Who was responsible for helping Miley out with songwriting on this particular song? Is it Katie B.? Is it Jesse J or was it Jay Z? Again, who helped Miley Cyrus put together the song Party in the USA? Give you a second to think about your answer. The answer is Jesse J. All right. All right. Next question Who was behind Britney Spears till the world ends track? Who was the songwriter behind that? I'll give you a couple of options here. Well, I'll give you a few options. Was it Kesha, Beyonce, or Adele? Those choices again, Kesha, Beyonce, or Adele. Who made Britney Spears till the world ends a hit? And the answer is Kesha. All right, so how are you doing on the quiz today? Did you know that these artists were songwriters behind other artists? 
Mm-hmm. All right, let's go into our next uh, question here. Which number one artist helped put together the song Sledgehammer? Which artist is behind the songwriting for Fifth Harmony's Sledgehammer? All right, here are your choices. We got Megan Trainer, Charlie Puth, Justin Timberlake. Let me give you those uh, options one more time. Megan Trainer, Charlie Puth, or Justin Timberlake. Who was behind the song Sledgehammer? And the answer is Megan Trainer. All right, so let's do one more song here. What artist is behind the song from Adam Lambert's What Do You Want From Me? You like that? Okay, I won't sing it. What do you want from me? Who is behind that song? You didn't like the way I... Okay, all right. I thought that was kind of hot how I did that. Who is behind the song, What Do You Want From Me? Is it Pink, The White Stripes, or Bobby Brown? Bobby Brown. One more time, your options are Pink, The White Stripes, or Bobby Brown. The artist behind writing the song, What Do You Want From Me, is Pink. How did you do on the quiz today? And you know how this works. If you did pretty well on it, man, I got to give you that virtual high five. Hand up. Oh, there you go. All right. So let's go ahead and transition into our main topic of the day. I mentioned at the top of the show, we will be talking about songwriting. Songwriting is a pretty big topic and um we covered some of this back we covered some things back in the uh the episode songwriting secrets from nashville i want to pick it up again today because i was actually working with uh, one of my um artists here locally and she comes in and we work on music on a regular basis and she's releasing some material here or there and putting some singles out doing some videos online or what have you she brought in a brand new song just a couple of weeks ago She let me hear the track. She brought one of her musicians in. She played the track. I listened to it. Usually when I'm working with an artist or I'm doing some producing, I try to sit back and just figure out what the artist wants to do, where they want to take the song, that type of thing. So here I am. I'm listening to her song. And the song was pretty sweet. I like, I, I like the concept. I like, uh, some of the, 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 the melodic structure of the song. I like some of the chord progressions, but the song played and played and played and played and once it was done i looked at my digital audio workstation and uh, the the time marker told me that the song was i think it was like five and a half minutes way 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 too long for a song all right so here here's the thing we are in the world where we have a lot of media competing for our attention and, and no one has time to listen to a five minute song. There are some exceptions with this. I understand that in music, you can be creative and you can have back in the day, we should call, we used to call it long versions. I, I get that. And that is applicable in certain instances. Maybe if you're doing something cinematic, but if you are putting out music for the average listener, meaning people who are going to find your music on a streaming platform or people who you hope will download your music from, let's say, an iTunes or Amazon, that type of thing, for you to make your song anywhere beyond four minutes, in my opinion, is too long. Four minutes, I think, is pretty lengthy. On average, your song should be no longer than three and a half minutes. That is it. That is the maximum length for the song. Now, let me take you into what my artist, what she was doing here. So when I listened to the song, we we started from the top and I'm listening for what is (laughs) causing this song to be so, 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 so long. Number one, when the song started, it had a ridiculously long intro. So I went back and I counted the bars in the intro. It was like an eight bar intro. Again, way too long. So, for instance, if your song is counted like this, one, two, three, four, one, two. Every time I hit the number one, 
that's a bar. So if I go one, two, three, four, that's one bar. One, two, three, four. That's two bars. Okay. So imagine you have eight sets of those counts, essentially. Now, of course, there's music playing there, but that's a very, very long time for an intro. So as a songwriter, don't spend a huge amount of time on your intro. Now, if you're some well-known songwriter, world-renowned songwriter, you can actually get away with doing things like that because people will hang around to listen to your creativity. If one of the artists that I mentioned earlier or one of the famous songwriters I mentioned earlier were to drop a song and they had some super long intro, we'll think it's genius because they started off with some great, uh, great long musical expose for you. And I, we don't have that type of uh, name recognition. You really need to kind of get to the point. So my artist, she spent way too much time on her intro. Second thing that I think was a major, major miss on her part, her verses in the song, they were also eight bars. And then on top of that, I think she had some kind of like a pre-chorus kind of turnaround type of deal that occupied another four bars. And then she finally got to the chorus. Absolutely wrong. No, no, no. Here's my recommendation for you. If you are getting into songwriting, restrict yourself, in my opinion, try to make your song your verses in your song, four bars. Yep, four bars. I know it's short. I know it's a a short amount of time, but I think four bars is more of a manageable situation. At the max, you can maybe go with maybe six bars and maybe use the, the latter two. So you have four bars maybe for your verse. Maybe use two bars for a pre chorus or a turnaround or for some type of a build, if you will. I'm really big on not having these long verses. Now, again, you may be thinking that's no time to write. You can't develop a story. I get it. But here's the beauty of it. You can always have a second verse. If need be, you may even have a third verse. But if your verses are so long, it's going to take a long time to get to your chorus, of which we'll talk about here in in just a second. To me, you're going to lose interest before the good part shows up. So I really think it's very important to restrict the length of your verses. And here's the thing. If you are a good songwriter, you can actually do a lot of creative things lyrically in that short amount of time. So if I force you or if you're forced to build a narrative or build content or or create a story in four bars, you're going to be a lot more selective in terms of how you put things out there, how you're going to, how you're placing your lyrics. And again, you don't have to adhere to this as though it's some type of law, uh, but it's, it's highly recommended. And, and in fact, I would challenge you to go listen to some of the popular songs that are out there on the radio today or online or streaming or what have you. You, you probably will see the formula that I'm talking about right here. All right. So let's move on to the next thing here of which I just mentioned a second ago or alluded to. Your choruses, your chorus is the infectious part of your song. That's the part that everyone should sing along to. They call that the hook because it's something that hooks the listener. It captures the listener. So your hook, in my opinion, should show up no less than four times in your song. In my opinion, your hook should be about eight bars. And if you're doing the math, yeah, it's twice as long as your verses because you're trying to establish that melody in the mind of the listener. That's the thing that's going to cause people to sing the song when they're away from their phone or away from their speakers or whatever. That's the part that you want to hook your audience. So as a result, you need to conserve space or conserve time by making your verses shorter and making your choruses repeat. Now, I mentioned eight bars, so don't have a huge, big, long thing that has to be developed for your chorus in eight bars. You should have 
a melody structure that can be repeated in four bars. So in other words, you have some type of melody line that happens in four bars, and then you have another four bars where that melody line is essentially repeated. 